In today's video, what is the lowest calories that you can get down to if you're trying to go from looking like this while you're bulking to looking like this and getting shredded? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a question that I got right here on my Instagram direct message. You guys send me your questions. And uh, if I can't answer the question in there, maybe I'll answer it in a video because I feel like these, these questions are... They have a big reach. Like I get a lot of the same questions. That's why I love answering them. So the question is, how low can my calories get? And my friend that sent me the question gave me a lot of information. A little bit was missing, but I want you guys to understand that after 10 years as a full-time coach, after 30 years of lifting weights, I've got some interesting insights because I've done a lot of things the right way. And I've done a lot of things the wrong way. I've also worked with some pretty amazing athletes that I've seen some pretty remarkable things. So I don't really place limitations on what people are capable of. But there's definitely a basement to where calories and macros should be, and we're going to talk about that. But let me read the question. I'm 37, working on my fitness goals, currently working on building muscles on a bulk phase. I'm three weeks, I'm going to start my cut. I have about 20 pounds of fat to lose. I'm eating 2,800 to 3,000 calories a day, making sure to hit my protein. My question is, what is the lowest calories I can get to? Would it be safe to work my way down to 17 to 1,800 calories a day in 500 calorie increments? So... This is a really great question because I think calories is one side of the equation where we look at, okay, we can literally just pull some calories out and we understand the energy balance equation, right? If you are taking in as many calories or more calories than you need, your body is going to be storing, maintaining, or adding body fat somewhere in there. However, if we switch gears and we pull out some calories, we can put ourselves in a caloric deficit. What is happening during a caloric deficit? Essentially, although our body fat is always being stored and used, that's a never-ending process, at the end of the day, there's a net loss when you're in a caloric deficit, meaning your body is breaking down fat for fuel that is then not being replaced. So when you talk about how low can your calories get, the question comes down to what is your purpose? You've spent a lot of time bulking, so I'm assuming you don't want to lose muscle. So I'm going to give you the very basic ending plan for where you should be when it comes to looking at fat loss and where your numbers can be and based on what I've seen. So the lowest I will go with my athletes is about a gram per pound of their goal weight. So I didn't get a weight from you. I didn't get a weight. But let's just say since you're on 3,000 calories, let's just say you're at 200 pounds. And your goal, as you said, is to lose 20 pounds. So the baseline, I would go about 180 grams of protein. Now, that number is pr pretty static. I don't really adjust that number. And what's nice about that number is as you lose body fat, your percentage of calories from protein will actually be going up because you're going to be pulling calories from other things. So although we are going to be losing body fat, we won't be losing lean muscle or muscle tissue, okay? Assuming our other calories are in the proper range. The second number that is of the most importance and probably the most static is nutritional fat. Now, the lowest I've seen my athletes and myself have success is 17% of your total daily calories. That's the number that I have found that I really, really won't go below. Now, why is that? Nutritional fat or the fat that we consume is essential in our downstream hormones. Meaning, if you're not taking in enough nutritional fat, your body will begin to compensate and cause some real problems, okay? You're gonna have some adaptations to your hormones, your digestion, and some even some weird things to your skin, teeth, nails that, that are just not fun. And you might not realize it because it's such a gradual thing, but I promise you, 20% of your total calories coming from fat is a number that should be pretty static on the low end. You can start higher than that. You can be at 25%, 30%, whatever you prefer. But how low can your calories get? I'm going to give you that number in just a minute. Now, carbohydrates are going to be the biggest variable. Although carbohydrates are essential for us to perform at our best, you can really restrict carbohydrates and get a great gap in calorie expenditure, okay? Now, although I consider carbohydrates to be beneficial, some will argue, well, they're not necessarily a requirement because our body can produce carbohydrates. It can convert things to carbohydrates. Well, why would our body do that? Exactly, because it needs them to perform at its best. So gluconeogenesis, which is going to happen, it can even happen in the absence of, of calories by breaking down muscle tissue. Carbohydrates are protein sparing, meaning they benefit the rebuilding and prevent the breakdown of muscle during times of extreme exercise. 
if you're trying to build muscle, especially when calories get low, we're going to prioritize those carbohydrates around our training, the pre and the post workout meal. Now, if you're bulking and you're getting carbohydrates all day long, I don't place as much emphasis on that, but I promise you, your performance in the gym is going to really determine how well you keep muscle along with that post-workout recovery period. You can really spare your protein by eating some carbohydrates. So how low can carbohydrates get? The alarm bells go off for me when your carbohydrates get below your body weight. Meaning, as I said, you are at 200 pounds in my theoretical weight. So that's about the lowest I would want your carbohydrates to go. Okay. Now, they could go a little bit lower as low as 150 because that's your goal weight, but that's when I would be adding one or two days per week where I would be probably adding 100 to 150 grams of carbs to your daily totals. So let's say on a low day, you're at 180 protein. You're on something like 40 fat and you're on something like 80 carbs, right? Your refeed might be 280 carbs or 300 carbs for one day. What's that going to do? That's going to allow us to keep fat burning going through the benefit of improved digestion, improved recovery. You're going to get the psychological benefit of seeing your muscles look fuller and bigger. You're going to get the psychological benefit of being stronger in the gym that day. And a lot of times what people don't realize is that fat loss is not just about the physiological or the hunger and the changes that are happening to our body related to the physiology, but it's the psychology. As someone who's done this many times over 30 years, I can tell you that sometimes the hardest part for me is seeing my clothes get smaller my lifts go down a little bit in the gym. Now I've come to realize over time that that doesn't necessarily mean I'm losing muscle. Sometimes I'm losing leverages, right? Fat does allow us to be more leverage and fat does cover our muscles. So although I might look a little smaller with my shirt on, you get this benefit of when you take your shirt off, you look incredible. You look a lot leaner and more muscular. And some people actually think you're gaining weight. In fact, the only time I really get the fake natty comments is when I'm shredded and they don't realize I've lost 30 pounds of body fat and they can just see the separation in all the muscles. That's what competing in bodybuilding is all about. And that's what most people don't ever get to that lean. It's certainly not necessary. It's just something that I enjoy and I'm passionate about. And I want to do it every couple of years for the rest of my life. If that's not you and you're not getting to that level of leanness, you probably don't need to be that aggressive. Now, the final component I want to talk about is something that I've discovered over the last couple of years is that I would much rather not restrict calories, and I would much rather increase daily activity. I have found that I can almost unlimitedly add daily steps, incline walking, low intensity, steady state cardio, and get the same benefit. By keeping my carbohydrates and fats a little bit higher, I find that nutritionally, I feel much better, right? I'm not starving myself, but through moving throughout the day, low intensity, steady state cardio, a little trick for you guys. Do you know how to burn fat? Well, our bodies burn a fuel source based on the intensity of exercise. The lower the intensity of the exercise, first of all, I want you to think sleep. When you're sleeping, you're burning almost pure body fat. Now, when you're walking, you're burning preferentially body fat. When you're jogging, you're starting to dip into carbohydrate stores. And when you're sprinting, you're preferentially using carbohydrate stores. Okay. So on that spectrum, if you can do some low intensity, steady state, like walking, incline walking, elliptical, these things are going to pr preferentially burn body fat for fuel, okay? This is called lipolysis. Now, why is that beneficial over burning carbohydrates for fuel? I find that I am less hungry, less moody throughout the day, especially when I get leaner. And I also find that low-intensity steady state actually energizes me as opposed to high-intensity exercise, which fatigues me the rest of the day. So I find that there are a few little hacks that you can do here. Instead of focusing on how low your calories can get, and that number is 10 times your body weight. That's the number that I feel I start to worry, right? So if you are down to say 180 pounds and you're at 1800 calories, is it okay to go below that? For sure, for short periods of time. Listen, I've done extreme things with myself and my athletes when the goal is very tangible and it's right there and you can reach out and you can lose another couple pounds of body fat and, and look amazing and maybe go win the Olympia. Yes, we're gonna do what we gotta do. But for the person that I'm coaching, if I have to get them below 10 times their body weight in calories, I'd much rather increase their activity. So pay attention. Don't be so aggressive with calorie drops. Don't go 500. Start with 250 to 300 and a little bit more activity and then make those adjustments. And you'll see these thresholds really allow you to make small adjustments along the way, lose fat for a few weeks or longer, and don't make adjustments until you stall. That way you ensure you're eating as much as possible, doing as least cardio amount as possible, and getting the most benefit out of that. 
If your goal after this bulk is to keep as much muscle as possible, focus on losing about one to maybe one and a half percent of your body weight per week at the beginning and between a half and 1% of your body weight a week towards the end. All right, hopefully this answers your question, guys. Hope you're off to a great start to this year. Let's have some fun. I've got my transformation challenge. It's it's already 30 days in, and I'm really excited about the results that we're seeing. So maybe we're going to have to do another one. Comment below if you'd be interested in our next challenge. All right, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.